I'm sure she had a tough time, you know, acknowledging that she's, yes, going to be a federally convicted felon. Today, what happened in court, which was a pretty standard procedure that they had, uh, they had worked out an agreement, uh, the defense had worked out an agreement with the prosecution, and he went in front of the judge, and the judge did a plea, had them do a plea, and uh, the judge, you know, has not said yet whether he's accepting it, whether he's, he wants to, in federal court, they have what's called a pre-sentence investigation, where um, they really go through the person's life and crime and everything about them and uh, mitigating or aggravating circumstances that would either help or hurt them, and they evaluate everything. And the judge wanted to see that first. Most of the time, if the prosecution and defense go together with essentially a joint recommendation, what they want to do with the case, the judge usually accepts that. Lori Lachlan and her husband were really not taking the biggest risk at all, because if the judge does not want to do the sentence that they agreed upon with the prosecution, uh, then they're allowed to back out. So it's what we call in the legal profession a free bite at the apple. They, the judge either goes ahead and accepts what they do, or what they want, or they can back out and they live to fight another day. They can then uh, have their day in court and go to trial. The case itself, uh, a lot of people think this has actually been going on for many, many years where people have sort of wealthy people have been able to get their uh, children into best schools. And it's often done much more subtly. Somebody gives a $2 million donation to the university and then the uh, child applies and they just kind of get accepted. And it's uh, uh, nobody gets arrested or charged with that. This one was pretty blatant though. And that's why it was really very upsetting to the American public.